Hey everyone, it's Mr. Weidenbach. I've been missing you. Hopefully you're finding ways to be colorful and creative while you're stuck at home, like me. You might be like me in another way too. You don't have all the art materials you wish you had. Most of mine are still at school. Well, we'll have to be creative and do the best with what we have. Now, this week's art project doesn't require very much. Just paper, a brush, and some coffee. Wait, does that say what I think it says? Painting with coffee? Is that even a thing? Well, you bet it is. See, an artist named Gadak Al-Nazar is doing amazing artwork with this unusual medium. Now, you know what a medium is, right? We're not talking medium like small, medium, large shirts. Medium means what you use to make art. Anywho, let's check it out. Gadak uses coffee, paper, brushes, and even toothbrushes and hair combs to create his amazing artworks. As you can see, some of the coffee marks are more saturated and darker, while other coffee marks are less saturated and lighter. But they're all shades of brown. When artists use just one color, it's called monochromatic. You can control how dark the coffee is by how long it sits and evaporates before you paint. Now, we all know what evaporates means. The water in the coffee is rising up into the air as it sits there. It rises up as water vapor, leaving darker and darker liquid. Do you see the toothbrush and hair comb in the picture on the right? How do you think the artist uses those? What effect do you think they would have? Hmm. Can you see what Gadak uses to start these artworks? What do they have in common? Yep. Do you see the handprints? It's a little messy, yes, but remember that messy can be fun. Just make sure you wash your hand before continuing your art. And don't touch the furniture. And definitely don't touch the dog. You might just want to ask your parents first. Now, what exciting things do you think you could turn your handprints into? Hmm. I wonder. Oh my goodness, what the what? Yep, that's right. Sometimes Kadak doesn't even use paper. He uses leaves. Do you think you could find some leaves to paint on today? I bet you can. Now, there are lots of kinds of things we could make using coffee. But first, we got to start with the coffee, right? So I want to show you. I've got a couple kinds of coffee here. This is coffee that was made just a little while ago. So it has most of the water still in it. Now, this coffee was made yesterday. So a lot of the water in it has evaporated as water vapor, leaving that darker liquid inside. So I'm going to use the darker and the lighter at certain times today. As you can see, I've kind of gotten started here. I'm creating a landscape. So I've turned my paper horizontally, what we call landscape orientation, and I've started to create some hills going off into the background. Now, do you notice that the hills that are furthest away are lightest and they're getting progressively darker as they come closer? That's a trick called atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective was invented 600 years ago by an Italian artist named Masaccio. Well, we're going to continue. Since as we're getting closer, it's getting darker. So we need a darker hill even closer. Now I'm going to use a couple brushes. You can use one brush. You could use no brushes. You literally could do this with your finger or a Q-tip or even a toothbrush. We'll talk about toothbrushes a little later. But I'm going to get a little bit of this dark. And I'm going to see if I can create a hill that's a little bit closer. And maybe I'll draw kind of the outside shape of one first. And then notice how I'm using that brush. I'm moving it up just like it was the grasses that are growing on that hill. It gives a little bit of texture. We talk about texture quite a bit, don't we? We artists use words like texture quite a bit to describe what we do. We have our elements of art and our principles of design. There we go. 
Now, if I just went side to side like this line here, it doesn't look very natural, does it? It's worth that extra effort to kind of bring your brush up, 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 up. It takes a long time, but, you know, great artwork takes a long time. Whenever I'm creating something with grass, it always takes a very long time because I'm literally painting or drawing each little bit of grass. Now here I've got some uh, part that I'd like to be a little lighter. So I'm going to go and get that lighter bit of coffee. It should be somewhere in between and see if I can complete this foreground. You remember that word, I hope. Things that are close to us in art are called foreground. Things in the middle are called midground, and things in the back, can you guess? Of course, it's called background. There, okay. So we've got these rolling hills getting progressively more saturated or darker close to us, and lighter, less saturated toward the back. Now, I mean, it's pretty cool. We could leave it this way, but I'm thinking maybe some trees might be what we need. Now, trees are fun to do because trees can look all kinds of ways. It's hard to mess up a tree. They really just have one rule is that they kind of get thinner as they go up. So as I move this tree up, I'm going to use my brush a little more lightly. A little more lightly, a little lighter, and a little lighter. Notice this tree is close to us. It starts here in the foreground, but it's overlapping the midground and even the background. I could put another one here, and remember, it doesn't have to look just the same. Maybe this one's a little shorter. A happy little short tree here that's thick toward the bottom and gets mighty thin up at the top. That's right. There we go. Now, if I wanted to start a tree here in the midground, I might not use that darkest coffee. I may use this medium coffee that was made just today, and that makes it look a little lighter. We found that was called atmospheric perspective. It kind of tricks our eyes into believing that it's further away than it really is. Let's try another little tree. This one I'm going to put kind of behind the one I just did, overlapping trees often overlap from our perspective. Think about a forest full of trees, many, many overlapping trees, right? Maybe another scrawny one over here. Not bad, not bad. Now, I could leave it with a few trees. I could turn it into an entire forest. I leave that to you. But I do want to show you a couple ways to use a common toothbrush. Now, first, don't use a toothbrush that's going to get you in trouble. Maybe you have an old toothbrush or you can be sure to wash it out well at the end of using it. I can think of a couple ways to use it. One is to create that texture. I'm going to get some of that dark coffee and I'm going to kind of dab it right up here to create leaves, little spots of leaves up here. Just dabbing up and down. There's no wrong way to do it. Like I said, that's the great thing about trees. They come in so many different shapes. So many forms and varieties. Well, it can look about anyway. There we go. Kind of going on top of those branches. When the trees have no leaves, it looks like it's winter. Those trees that lose their leaves, of course, are called deciduous trees. And now I think spring has sprung on this tree, at least, and is starting to fill out. Now there's another way I can use this toothbrush as well. I can create a use texture. Now we're going to be flicking a little bit into our toothbrush. You gotta be careful with this because it can kind of sling that coffee everywhere. So you wanna be a little cautious about this. Maybe even take your project outside for this bit. Now if I flick it a little bit at the top like this, do you see that little hint of a texture? Looks like it could be the first stars coming out in the sky. You could use that instead to create the leaves of a tree or just the variety of wildflowers on these hills. Try it in combination. Maybe a little bit of padding and a little bit of flicking to create a beautiful outdoor landscape. I can't wait to see it, everyone. Yours won't look like mine, but that's a good thing. We need variety. I love to see lots of different kinds of landscapes. Hey again. 
So in addition to the landscape I just demonstrated and those handprint images we saw a little earlier, I have a couple more ideas that you can do with coffee. I think you're going to like them. The first one involves being a little bit messy. Remember, messy can be fun if you do it carefully. Check this out. I was a super mess. I spilled coffee. Really, I spilled it on purpose. I spilled bits of coffee here and here and here and here. And then I let it dry. Now, I didn't use anyone's coffee they were drinking. You know how grown-ups are about coffee. So use some old coffee. And spill it with permission. Somewhere it won't ruin the furniture. Coffee table might be good. Dining room table might be good. Outside, probably better. Ask a grown-up if you're not sure. So spill a bit of coffee and then wait. Wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, take a very close look at those splotches. Turn it round and round until you see something that might resemble a monster. And that's what I want you to do, is take a pen and turn those splotches into coffee monsters. Look at my goofy coffee monsters. Watch out for that guy right here. Pretty fun, right? At first, you might not see a monster in your coffee splotch, but if you turn them around and around and around and around, you finally see something come to life. And then, just using a pen or even a pencil, you can turn it into your very own coffee monster or a whole bunch of them. Try that. So once you've done that, you're ready for the big show. The big show, pirate maps. Anyone who knows me knows I love pirates. All things pirates. Pirate maps are some of my very favorite things to make. And this one was turned old looking with coffee. I bet you guessed that, right? That's right. It's not really hundreds of years old. It was made to look old by using coffee. Now, there's a couple ways you can make an old pirate map. You can start with a piece of paper and turn it brown first. So it looks old. And then you can go over and draw all the parts of the map. Or you can flip that whole process on its head and start with the drawing. Now, if you start with the drawing, you have to be careful. You have to use the right kind of pen. Some pens, when they get wet with the coffee, will just spread and disappear, and all your work's gone. So be sure to experiment first to make sure you have the right pen. I did that. I do a lot of experimenting before I do my final work. Here's one page of just experiments. Here's another page where I was experimenting with different kinds of pens to see which would look the best after I put coffee on that paper. Now here's the one I'm working on right now, a brand new pirate map. I've got drawings, I've got words, I have cool scrolly things and fancy designs, but it doesn't look old yet. I think you know what it needs, a bit of coffee. So I'm gonna finish the pencil, go over with pen, and then I'm going to brush on that coffee so it looks hundreds of years old. All right, it's up to you. I want to see what you can make with coffee. And once you've made a landscape or a handprint drawing or perhaps a map or even a coffee monster, I want you to take a picture and I want you to send it to my email. It's widenbachc at myips.org. I'll spell that for you. W-E-I-D-E-N-B-A-C-H-C at myips.org. Of course, all that information's on the Edison website. You can just go there and my email will be available for you there. So, take a picture, send me those images. I would love to see them. I'm just as bored as you are. I need your artwork to make my day a little bit better. So please, start sending them in. If you send me an email, you can bet I'll be sending one back telling you what I think about your awesome coffee art. All right, let's get creative and colorful, my friends, and we'll talk soon. I miss you. Bye, everyone.